Good morning, students. Uh, last video we saw that Mahatma Gandhi had made some very strong uh, demands uh, uh, from the British administration. He had written a letter to the Viceroy of India, that is the then Viceroy of India, Lord Irwin, in 1930, that is, and he expressed his uh, demands, the prominent demands, which he felt were the, were the burning demands of the Indians, and he wanted um, uh, uh, the British to look into those demands very seriously, and if the, uh, if the, if the British failed to do so, then Gandhiji uh, threatened the British that uh, if uh, in the failure of compliance, uh, they he would be forced to launch a nationwide agitation, a nationwide uh, movement, and um, ultimately, the, as expected, the British were uh, not at all willing to oblige uh, Mahatma Gandhi and the Indians uh, with those demands. But um, out of those 11 demands, two were very, very prominent. Uh, the first one being uh, the, uh, the abolition of the salt tax and the second one being the re reduction in the rate of land revenue. Uh, this abolition of salt tax naturally was felt that because the uh, salt happens to be an essential item which is used by uh, every, uh, every human being on the planet, rich or poor, and it was found to be extremely uh, harsh and hard on the poor people of India. And the second one was the reduction in the rate of land uh, revenue. And uh, this was something uh, which uh, the British also did not want to oblige Gandhiji on. And naturally, these two prominent demands were not met. And of course, there were other demands, nine demands, when which one of them was very prominently uh, that Gandhiji also demanded, that if you look at it interestingly, he wanted the uh, complete prohibition of liquor in India. Now, forget about 1930. We have seen this during the corona crisis that you cannot ban or uh, prohibit liquor sale in the country. You know, we have, every society is very fond of it. Mm, we have seen it how difficult it is to impose these uh, ban on liquor sales stuff. So naturally, uh, none of the demands were met, and there were just uh, empty promises of looking into the matter. And the Gandhiji very promptly launched the civil disobedience movement, and uh, this uh, really galvanized the whole country. Um, um, hundreds and thousands and millions of Indians actually participated in uh, the civil disobedience around the country. And uh, but uh, uh, yes, but very interestingly, uh, students. Um, then, uh, the, uh, then the, uh, and the talks were called by the British. The British, because they felt that it would be very difficult for them to control this mass movement, and they really wanted to to have uh, the talks with uh, the uh, with uh, the Indian political leadership and the round table conference was called by the British in England but you have to understand one very important thing there were three round table conferences between the Indians and the Britishers between 1930 to 1932 Gandhiji participated in the second round table conference okay that's the first thing and the uh, and the second thing which uh, uh, which Gandhi did, which, which today uh, you know, if you look at it, uh, it appears to be not a wise decision to, that he had made. That was uh, uh, he called off the uh, civil disobedience movement uh, before he went to England to participate in those roundtable talks because Gandhi felt that uh, you know creating a good atmosphere con for the conversation, for a good atmosphere for the talks, mm, might yield results, and uh, that is what he did he cancelled or rather and called off uh, the civil disobedience movement before he left for the talks in England and uh, unfortunately those talks failed but though unfortunate but but uh, everyone expected it to fail because students you understand uh, you have to understand one very important thing and that very important thing is <clears throat> by 1930s uh, uh, Indians had had a complete change in the mindset. Now they would not settle for things like uh, dominion status and uh, sharing of power and then um, you know having certain ministries and participation in the council elections. Indians had passed through those marks, those landmarks, those checkpoints and those sign points. You know? British had been in India since 19, since 1757. Now it had been almost like 170 years and by the time it was 1930. 
and indians had had enough of britishers okay so they just wanted to see the back of britishers they wanted the britishers to leave india once and for all now people like gandhi ji or any political leadership of india at that point in time could not have gone into and entered into a conversation or talk with the british government whether in india or whether in england and try and work out a compromise of some middle path or something like that no it the people on the ground would not have taken it okay because uh, indians now wanted absolute freedom so now the so naturally now a one party that is the british they want to remain in india and to hold on to power by hook or crook and the other party is just to, talking about their absolute exit and a complete exit and a final exit so they do not have any common point to talk about so naturally uh, the the conversation or the second round table conference in india uh, in england between mahatma gandhi and the british administration it completely failed and nothing came out of the civil disobedience um, uh, that conversa- uh, conversation and the talks and the civil disobedience had already been uh called off by gandhi ji so it was a uh, kind of uh, 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 there was a spirit of confusion at that point in time we shall continue thank you